All right, let's do this. I'll give a minute for things to get going, and then I'm going to explain exactly what we're doing, uh, since it seems like a lot of you are unsure as to exactly what the nature of this is. So I'm excited about this. This should be a lot of fun. There is a delay. Since I've been having some issues with my streams on Sunday afternoons, having uh, some connection issues, I've increased the delay a little bit. So there's about a 15 to 20 second delay between what you guys are seeing and what's happening for me live. So there'll be a little bit of a delay in the response in terms of you guys responding to me and me responding to what's in the chat. But let me explain exactly what's going on. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate that. Um, so how we're going to do this is we're going to be uh, first talking about what our all-time favorite films and TV series are that uh, are historical in nature. Uh, they do not have to be historically accurate. So Braveheart, for example, would be okay to choose, even though we know that a lot of it is not historically accurate. If it is a period piece, in other words, if it's set in history, it's eligible for this. So what we're going to do is this. Um, we're going to put these in four categories. Ancient to 1815. So everything from the beginning of time all the way up through the Napoleonic War uh, period. The second bracket's going to be everything from 1816 up to 1918. So we're talking American Civil War, World War I, Spanish-American War, all of those sorts of things. Um, Necru, you're going to very quickly get banned if you don't chill. Um, the third one will be World War II. There's a ton of World War II films and series out there, so it gets its own category. And then the fourth one will be post-World War II, everything since then. How we're going to do this is we're going to talk. You guys are going to give me your ideas. We're going to make a list. Um, and then once we make the list, I'm going to give you guys a link, and you're all going to go and vote. And you can rank them in each category. So all the ancient to 1815, say we come up with 20 of them. You can drag them in your own order from 1 to 20, how you think they should be ranked. And then when you submit that, that's going to add up those points, and we're going to get an overall ranking. We're going to take the top eight in each of those categories, and then we're going to create a poll. And we're going to do one versus eight, two versus seven, three versus six, until we get down to a final four. We're going to pick the winner in each of those categories. So it's going to take a little while, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So um, we're going to start with ancient to 1815. Uh, so I want you guys to throw out to me your, your favorite, and there's no criteria for this. It's whatever you like doesn't have to be what do you think is most historically accurate, things like that. Whatever you like in the ancient to 1815 category. Start throwing out your ideas. So we've got 300. Uh, that definitely applies in there. Yeah, it's March Madness style, David. That's what we're going to do. Um, so Edge of Tomorrow, no, that's completely fictional. But that's a great movie, Kimberly. I like that movie a lot. Uh, so The Waterloo, 18, er, uh, 1973, is a great one. Um Gladiator, yeah. Excellent. Amadeus, we can throw that on there. Saving Private Ryan would not be in this category yet. Troy, we'll throw Troy in there. Kingdom of Heaven. There's going to be a lot of these. King Arthur, uh, which one is that? I'm trying to think of that specific movie. Glory doesn't go in this category. That That's Civil War. We'll put Turn Washington Spies in there. That's very good. All right, Last of the Mohicans. Oh, John Adams. Yeah, we'll throw John Adams in there. It's a great series. Spartacus. All right, we'll throw that one in there. It's going to be a lot of... Uh, oh, hey, we can't forget. Thank you, James. I was just about to say, we got to have Master and Commander in there. Far Side of the World, that's a great one. Braveheart. All right, we can put Rise of Empires. Oh, Waterloo's 1970. I got you, Camouflage, and thank you for that donation. Appreciate it. Um, we can put Passion of the Christ in there. That gets into religion, but that's okay. 
Uh, it's based on something. Uh, even if you don't necessarily believe in the Bible, I think um, the overwhelming evidence is there for Jesus being a historical person. Outlaw King, okay. Uh, 300's already on the list. The Life of Brian, no. <laughs> nice try. Um, Ben-Hur. We'll go with the uh, Charlton Heston version. Because I know there's a newer version of it. 1917 is not in this category. Oh, the Rome series, HBO. That was very good. Oh, The Last Kingdom? Yeah. Oh, man, we got a lot of these. This is going to be interesting. We'll do a few more. Uh, again, Glory doesn't go in this one. Ninth Legion, I'm not familiar with that. Hey, mods, help me out here. Oh, Vikings is good. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take Passion of the Christ out and um, uh, just to kind of avoid the whole religion part of things. Gettysburg doesn't go here. Apocalypto would. We've got Patriot already. Vikings is already there. Uh, A Knight's Tale is too fictional for me. I'm not going to add that one. Can uh, mods, you guys, do something about the guy who's spamming Iraq over and over again? Ninth Legion will do that. Camouflage, thank you. I got Apocalypto on there. It's right here. Monty Python, the Holy Grail. Lawrence of Arabia doesn't go in this section, guys. Keep it. Th- we're talking ancient to 1815 right now. Um, same with Lone Survivor. That doesn't go here. We've got Braveheart already. Oh, we'll, we'll put the Hornblower series in there. Horatio Hornblower, that's good. Oh, I'm not doing Life of Brian, no. Downfall doesn't go here either. This is... Ancient to 1915. We'll, uh, or to 1815. We'll do the Sharp series. Uh, and they've got to be at least mostly based on historical figures. So, um, I've got Master and Commander. Kingdom of Heaven is here. Pretty sure I put Kingdom of Heaven. Yeah. uh, Waterloo is here already. All right. Free State of Jones doesn't go in this section either. Hamilton's a musical. I'm going to say no to that one. Uh, Free State of Jones doesn't go in this category, guys. Stick to the category, please. Wait, Mr. Terry's here? I didn't see that in the chat. Oh, man. Cold Mountain doesn't go in this one either. Michael, Free State of Jones is a, is a Civil War movie. It doesn't go in this category. Oh, The Tudors. Yes, let's put The Tudors in there. A lot of it's fictional, but I'll allow it. In the Name of the King, is, uh, I forget what that one is. I think we're good with what we've got. Mr. Terry, what's going on, man? If you got, I'm sure you already have already, guys, but if you haven't already, you better be subscribed to Mr. Terry because he's been doing what I do for a lot longer than I do it. In fact, he was one of the inspirations for me doing this uh, as something to do while I was waiting to get out and travel and do more historic site videos. So, um, all right, we're going to add the Borgias and then we're done, okay? Um, and I'm guessing we're going with the... Uh, um, gladiators on there. All right. So, uh, next question. All right, let's save that, that, uh, cause we're going to vote on all these at once. So if you're just joining us, this is how this works. Um, we're going to make these lists of all these films and, and series. Uh, and then once we're done making the four lists for our four categories, you're going to rank them in order. So you can drag them into the order. You think put the best ones at the top, the, uh, ones you think are the, least good at the bottom. 
We'll take the top eight from each of the four categories, and then we'll do a poll style thing. Kind of like what Mr. Terry's doing with his historic figures poll, which I think is awesome, and you guys should be checking that out as well. <laughs> That's basically your class in real life. I hear you, man. I hear you. All right. Next question. This is 1816 to 1918. So this would include World War I, the American Civil War, um, Mexican War, anything in between. So we're going we're gonna to put Alamo, uh, John Wayne, and then Alamo, uh, we'll just say Billy Bob, because that's who plays that same character in that one. Maryland better than OSU. Uh, get out of here with that stuff. All quiet on the Western Front. Excellent. Zulu for sure. Glory, Gettysburg. 1917. We'll put Hunley in there. All right, the Red Baron. Is there a movie about Island Wanda? Uh, Island, uh, Island Wanda, I guess that's how it's pronounced. Gods and Generals. That'll get some people going. The Last Samurai. Cold Mountain. Does Wonder Woman count? No. Band of Brothers does not go in this section. Tombstone. All right. My, my wife and I watched Tombstone in Tombstone. So that was kind of cool. The Lost Battalion. Lincoln. It's going to be interesting to see how you guys vote on this stuff. I think we have Zulu already. Yep. Ironclads. Let's do Andersonville too. I really liked that. That was a TNT thing. Lawrence of Arabia. Joe, thank you so much. And hey, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. Island Wanda has a film. Okay. So that was kind of happening at the same time that Zulu was. Amistad, very good. They Shall Never Grow Old is a documentary, so I'll say no to that one. Django Unchained is basically fictional. Completely Back to the Future 3. Dunkirk, okay. Very cool. Is there a Gallipoli movie? I'm not familiar with that one. I feel like I need to go see it now. Dr. Zhivago. Is Dr. Zhivago based on something in his history? Um, because I'm not familiar with that. Is 12 Years a Slave, is that one uh, a fictional story or is that real? That's a question I have. Grant series is a, uh, is a documentary, so we're not doing documentaries for this. Ace Ventura is a historical masterpiece. I just read they're coming out with an Ace Ventura 3. Saving Private Ryan doesn't go in this section. This is 1816 to 1918 right now. Extra history, Otto von Bismarck. Good, the bad, and the ugly. Not a uh, historic one. We did the Waterloo movie in that section. Uh, that doesn't go in this one. Ooh, Hatfields and the McCoys is good. Very good, by the way. I recommend it. We have the Red Baron on the list already. Oh, wait. Why, yeah, why did we add Dunkirk? That's World War II. What am I thinking? My bad. Roots. That's based on history. We'll throw that one in there. Uh, we have Glory. We have Gettysburg. We have uh, Gods and Generals. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I, letters from Iwo Jima. That's also World War II. All Quiet on the Western Front we have. Ooh, the current war is good. We'll throw that in there. Breaker Moran, I'm not familiar with that, but I'll throw it in there. Okay, so 12 Years a Slave is based on someone's memoir, so I'll allow it then. I wasn't sure if that was real or if it was just a fictional story. Letters from Iwo Jima doesn't go in this section. Catherine the Great would also not be in this section. That would be prior to this. Deadwood is is so loosely based on history and so is gangs of new york that i would say no to those ones 
Um, the Patriot would have been in the last section. World War II, we haven't gotten to World War II yet. I think we've got pretty much everything. Uh, Ali, that's fine. Um, we just, that's not what we're talking about. And don't spam anything. That doesn't help you. Uh, John Adams series with, was in the last section as well. And it can be TV series as well. Right now, uh, and Dances with Wolves is a fictional story also. Free State of Jones. Yeah, let's add that. Sorry, I should have gotten that sooner. Um, Blind Q, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Leipzig, very cool. Uncle Tom's Cabin's a book, but is there a movie based on that? Um, yeah, we'll do Titanic. That's it's a histor it's a fictional story, but it's built largely around a historic event. Uh, Lincoln, we have already. Young Winston, somebody keeps saying, so we'll add that. Is there a movie, Passendale? Passendale? A War Horse, again, is that a, that's really largely... Well, you know, I, I said Titanic was okay, so I guess we'll allow War Horse. Iron-jawed angles, I'm not familiar with that one. But Nathan keeps saying it over and over again. I, I see it, Nathan, you don't have to keep saying it. I think we've got everything that's going to get ranked up there anywhere i do have turn washington spies in here so let's go ahead and save that this one's going to get crazy this next one i know wait i gotta fix that because that's supposed to be ranking there we go all right now we go to question three here we go world war ii um so I'm going to start adding some. I'm not even going to be looking at the list until after I add a bunch of these here. And then you guys can start throwing them out because I know there's going to be a ton here. So once I get a bunch of them on here, you guys can tell me what I need to add. Come and see. Um, oh, downfall, definitely. Very good. Uh, the Pacific. Is there... Okay, Stalingrad. 1933. Or 1993, sorry. Fury. Oh, Tora, Tora, Tora. We'll add both midways. I think the first one was 1976. Um, this, and then... Uh, is it 2019, I think, is the other one. We've got Band of Brothers. Das Boat. We Were Soldiers doesn't go in this section. That's Vietnam. Hacksaw Ridge. Ooh, Unbroken is good. The Pianist. Generation War. I Have Come and See. We'll add Patton. All oh, the longest day imitation game. There's going to be so many in this category. That's um, a bridge too far. Resistance. That's a good one. What else we got? Battle of Britain. See, see what I mean? See how the. The chat is going absolutely crazy right now. I may have to put it on slow chat so that people can only type one message per minute just so we can kind of slow things down a little bit. Um, give me one second. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, so you'll, you guys will have to be a little more... Every 30 seconds. So nobody's going to be able to type a chat more than once every 30 seconds just so we can... Uh, make this a little more manageable. I have enemy at the gates. Inglorious Bastards is completely fictional, so we won't do that. Dyer Van Frank is good. I think I have Patton. I do. Make sure you look on the screen before you throw out ideas. Hogan's Heroes. Um, all right. I, I'm allowing fictional things that take place during... Um, historic events as long as the fictional things don't change history Ooh, letters from you Jima is good
Let's see, Darkest Hour. Man, there's so many here. And Glorious Bastards, no, just because they kill everybody and it completely changes history. Sobibor's good. I have Tora Tora Tora. I have Enemy at the Gates. USS Indianapolis. Uh, Flags of Our Fathers, let's get that in there. The Pianist we have, I believe, yep. Saving Private Ryan, I've got... Wind Talkers. Okay, that's a good one. 1917, we already have in the appropriate category. Oh, Schindler's List. Less. Yes. Uh, U571 changes history, so I'm going to say no. If it's fictional, it's okay, but like U571 actually falsifies an event, so I'm going to say no on that one. Uh, Boy in the Striped Pajamas, I'll allow. Saving Private Ryan, I have. Um, the King's Choice, yes. Oh, if I could spell. Bridge on the River Kwai. We'll do a couple more here. Greyhound. Oh, Thin Red Line. Red Tails. Okay, that one was good. I like that movie. Um, Valkyrie. Yeah, we'll do that. King's Choice, I've got. Who keeps saying Breaker Morant? We already added that one. So, um, Guns of Navarone. Is that World War II? Generation War, I've got. Uh, Men of Honor is not World War II. Pearl Harbor, I have. All right, I think we've got just about everything we need to have. Oh, Emperor will add. Come and see, I've got. Zulu was in the category that works for that one. Zach, thank you for that. Oh, Conspiracy, yes. Death of Stalin, that's really a post-World War II movie. Oh, The Great Escape is good. All right, I think we've got everything that uh, Fury's on there. I think that we've got everything that people would probably vote for uh, in the top eight. I don't think anything we haven't said so far is going to make it in the top eight. Um, so King's Speech probably could have gone there. But most of it takes place prior to World War... Or I guess I, we don't really have a pre-World War II category. So, um, All right, last question then. This is going to be post-World War II. So this is anything after the end of World War II that we're on to now. Uh, so We Were Soldiers would go here. Um, Black Hawk Down. Is Seven Years in Tibet, is that a historic, uh, like, is that real? Death of Stalin, Mr. Terry, is hilarious, especially if you know the history. It's dark comedy, but it's very, very good. I highly recommend it. It's mostly historical. Jason Isaacs as Marshal Zhukov in that movie is incredible. Oh, Apocalypse Now. I'm a big... Uh, Robert Duvall fan. Gandhi. Okay. Harry Potter. Oh, boy. American Sniper. Apollo 13. Very good. 13 Days. Excellent. Seven Years in Tibet is historical. Okay. That's with Brad Pitt, isn't it? Ooh, Selma. That's good. So MASH, are we talking, let's do both. We'll do MASH, TV series, MASH, and I guess that should be capitals, huh? And MASH the movie. Jarhead. Generation Kill, I think we have. 
Oh, did I forget to add it? I did. Okay. Full Metal Jacket. We've got Dunkirk would be in the World War II one. Uh, 13 hours. We have 13 hours and 13 days. Hamburger Hill. Platoon. Okay. Oh, Good Morning Vietnam. The Interview. Is that the one about Richard Nixon? I'm catching up on some of these here. Lone Survivor. Band of Brothers is in the uh, World War II category. We already got it. Gen We're doing TV series insane and movies. So we've got a lot of series in these. Band of Brothers. A-Team doesn't really count. Zero Dark Thirty does. Hunt for Red October is completely fictional. Um, and it's a completely made up historical event. So I'm going to say no on that one. Same with Top Gun. The Crown, we'll, we'll allow that. Ooh, The Butler's good. It's got some made-up things in it, but most historical movies do. Tiger King. October Sky. Miracle's good. I mean, that's sports, but it's a historic event. Chernobyl, ooh, very good. The Outpost. I'm not familiar with that. The Last Emperor. What's In the Name of the Father about? I'm not familiar with that. Rambo's a his completely made up thing, so not really. All the President's Men. All right. Sure, we'll add the big short. Hotel Rwanda. Okay, we'll do a few more here. Because I think we're getting into stuff that's probably not going to make the top 10. I already have De Death of Stalin. All right, Hurt Locker. Six days, okay. And The Last King of Scotland. I have Zero Dark Thirty. As well as We Were Soldiers. Uh, Medal of Honor Netflix series, that's really a documentary, no? Do I accept Broadway musicals? No, or we would have added Hamilton a while ago. Um, I think we've got everything that we're going to get that... Um, actually, yeah, we'll do Munich. I saw somebody say München. Um, all right, that's going to be good. I think that everything that's going to make the top eight is already there. So here's what we're going to do now. Here comes the fun part. So now... I'm going to post a link in just a minute, and you guys are going to have the opportunity to vote on these. And then I'll do my own vote after you guys have already voted and do my own rankings on how I see it. So how it works is you drag this. I'll put this, and then I'm going to, um, I'm going to pin it. So you drag them and then you submit your rankings based on how you see it. So we've already, we've added them all. So there's no more suggesting new ones. Now you guys just go vote and you start ranking them in the order that you see it. And I'll give you guys a few minutes to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and start doing my own rankings. And if you haven't, this is a really good time to both hit the like button and also subscribe if you're new. To abstain if you haven't seen it, just don't put it in your top eight. Just drag it below the top eight because it's the top eight that are going to be um, going to be scored. So it's okay if you don't know one. Just drag it down to the bottom. It's not a huge deal. UD, there shouldn't be any lag. I don't see any issues with lag right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to create an actual March Madness poll. We'll do the top eight in each category, and you guys will vote 
on individual competitions between number one versus eight, number two versus seven, and so on and so forth. Smolderhead, it is three o'clock uh, in the afternoon here. It is Eastern time zone, U.S. Big Man Sam, in each category, you rank them from first to last. That's all you got to do. I'll show you an example of one uh, so you guys can see how this works if you're not sure. Uh, so here we go. I've got Ancient to 1815. Now, I'm going to drag these in the order that I think they should be, or you can do the numbers. So I can say, you know what? I think that Gladiator's better than those. So now I've dragged it like that. Um, I really like John Adams, so I'm going to put that up at the top. So in each of these categories, stay hydrated. Yeah, I've got my Cherry Coke Zero from Burger King that I had for lunch. Robert, we did all four of them, so now we're voting. Um, I pinned the poll, but let me go ahead and just add it to the description of the video as well. So it'll be in the description. It's the Survey Monkey link down in the description of the video. I just added it. Also, oh, Smolderhead, you're an hour behind me. Uh, so yeah, so in each category, so here I'm going to go ahead and just do my ancient to 1815 ranking. Uh, Waterloo is really good. The easiest way for me to do this is I just kind of compare and, and see if I think anything's better than something else. Um, Turn Washington Spies I like a lot. Gladiator is really good. I'm not a huge fan of Troy. Braveheart I liked. I'm just kind of dragging them here and there for now. As long as you get kind of the top eight right, the rest don't matter so much. Tudors I'm a huge fan of, so I'm going to kind of move that. I'm just dragging stuff up and down for now, and then I'll kind of sort them more than that. Oh, this is a tough category. Last Kingdom's really good. Hornblower was all right. Sharp Series is all right. Spartacus. Last of the Mohicans I didn't really care for that much. Same with King Arthur. Yeah, if you do the top eight, you're good. Abrams, how's it going? Joyeux Noel, I don't think it's Christmas right now, is it? So John Adams, yeah, 300, eh. It was good. Like, there's not too many on here that I just didn't really like. You know, I think I liked most of these. Amadeus, not so much. Kingdom of Heaven's pretty good, but I'd put Master and Commander up higher. I'd probably put Waterloo like right there. I really like the Tudors, even though it's got a lot of fictional elements to it. Rome was good. Last Kingdom's very good. Um, I don't think I'd put Kingdom of Heaven that high. I liked Outlaw King better than Braveheart, because Outlaw King's a little more historically accurate. Um, let's see. That's pretty good. At least for my top eight, that's pretty good, I think. The rest I'm not going to get real crazy about. It's okay if you haven't seen them all. Mm. I didn't realize Untergang and Downfall were the same movie. I should fix that. I just saw people posting it after I had already... Um, added the one or the other so i'm gonna i'm gonna delete the german name of it i didn't realize that was the same thing there we go Oh, come on now. I'm just going to say nothing in that one. It's not letting me edit it. There we go. All right, we should be good now. Creative license was an understatement with... The Patriot. So here's the voting so far. We have 36 that have already been submitted. 
And yeah, you don't have to vote in all four categories. Hey, French Gustav, how's it going? Uh, you can skip categories too. Uh, so we'll see how it goes when we get a little further into the, the voting. We'll, we'll give some time for this before we do the next part. Yo, Brooklyn, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so let me uh, let me go back to voting myself here. All right, so I'm a much bigger fan of the Billy Bob version of Alamo than I am of the John Wayne one. Uh, let's see if there's anything in here that I feel should be higher. Twelve Years a Slave was really good, um, or so was Free State of Jones. Um, Lincoln, I love. All Quiet on the Western Front's good, but not that good. Zulu's good. Glory is going to go to the top here for me. And Gettysburg right below Lincoln. 1917 was pretty good. I like Gods and Generals, but I'm not a huge, insane fan of Gods and Generals. Um, it's not too bad there. MVP, real MVP. I will definitely be doing the next episode of the Bismarck series. When we're done with this stream, I'll be recording that. My son's doing great, yo, Brooklyn. Um, all three of my kids are doing well. My, my daughter had a concert yesterday. First live in-person event that she's gotten to perform in since December of 2019. So that was pretty exciting. Have I seen my way? I have not. No, uh, you don't need to redo it after the edit I made. We should be good. All right, so I think I'm pretty good with that. Oh, the current war was was pretty good. I'm going to move that up a little bit. Hatfields and McCoys also I liked a lot. I wouldn't put it in my top eight, but I put it close. I agree, Smolderhead. Extra Credits is a very good channel. All right, World War II. This one's going to be tough. Master and Commander is on the list. Uh, it was on the first list, the Ancient through 1815 list. That's why you didn't see it there. Raver, I agree. It is very uh, heartbreaking how that all kind of worked out. Would I go to the Suribachi battlefield? You mean on Iwo Jima? If I ever get the chance, I would absolutely love to. Um, Syed, someone said that the third part of the Gods and Generals video... It's just him critiquing the filmmaking part of it, which isn't really an area of expertise for me. So if he's done talking about the history, there's really not much more for me to react to. Necru, just pay attention and you'll figure out what the point of the stream is. Saying it multiple times doesn't help. Flyboys probably should have been added, but nobody suggested it at the time. So, um, All right, Band of Brothers definitely goes number one for me. Come and see is very good. Um Downfall's fantastic. I'm going to put Private Ryan down. I like the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan, but after that, it doesn't do a lot for me. Tor 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 is really good. I was a fan of Midway 2019. The, the 1976 one is way too, too much creative license for me in that one. Das Boat's very good. Man, there's a lot of good stuff here. Hacksaw Ridge, um, I think, should go up a little higher. Um... Patton I like, but again, a lot of creative license with just the character. Although historically, in terms of the events, Patton is pretty good at the history. So I, I shouldn't be that critical, I guess. Drag down Saving Private Ryan. Come on. There you go. Imitation Game was pretty good. I'll drag that up a little higher. Um, Letters from Iwo Jima was good. 
Darkest Hour is pretty good. Sobibor is pretty good. Flags of Our Fathers is pretty good. We have th- we have 46 in the World War II category. Oh, and Der Hunter Gang's still there. Um, so just ignore that, and we'll go with the... Uh, we'll go with the Downfall one. I don't think there's a video on Alvin York's Medal of Honor citation. Is there? Because, I mean... It wasn't recorded, I don't think. Millennium 87, I was taking um, requests, and I just put in what people suggested. Smolderhead, I haven't played Red Dead Redemption 2, so I can't speak to that. Big Hoss, the, the problem with doing movie reviews and stuff is copyright issues. Um, so showing clips and stuff, even when I did the reaction to at and Shay's gods and generals one, I got, um, a bunch of copyright issues that I had to edit out before I could make the video live. Um, I don't know how he got away with it and I couldn't, but thank you. Be- Battlefront hero. I think Mr. Terry's pretty good too. All right. So let's see. I'm going to do my post-World War II, and then we'll see how the results are coming in. And then we're going to take our top eight for each one of them. Holy cow, Codex donated donated $200 to the GoFundMe. Codex, thank you. That is amazing. That is going to go so far to helping uh, get me to Europe to make a bunch of great content for you guys. Uh, I'm going to be taking you guys on a tour of the battlefields of Western Europe, and I cannot wait to do it. Um, I don't know when that will happen. It will happen at some point. Uh, But you guys are going to get a ton of content from there when I do that. I'm going to try to get out and make some historic site videos this week. I also still have the uh, Stonewall Jackson wounding video to finish editing and get live in the next day or two for you guys. Have I been to Savannah? No, but I very much would like to go to Savannah. I hear it's um, it's a beautiful city. A lot of history there. Yeah, Mr. Terry. Hey, honestly, guys, without Mr. Terry, there is no vlogging through history, at least as, I, as it exists. Um, before I finish my vote, let me just, for those of you who are new, real quick, uh, Verdun's definitely on the list of places I'm going to go. Uh, this channel was made as a offshoot of my gaming channel, History Guy Gaming, because I used to do historic site videos when I would travel for work, and I would put them on my gaming channel, but they didn't get a lot of views, and so I thought I'd start a secondary channel to put all of my visits to historic sites. Well, I created the channel right about the time that COVID shut everything down, and so my travel for work has been non-existent. I have done no travel for uh, my last travel was to Boston a year ago, uh, right about this time a year ago. So in the meantime, Mr. Terry, I actually connected with Mr. Terry when he had all his people invade my gaming channel, History Guy Gaming. Uh, And that's how I learned about Mr. Terry in the first place. And I thought, wow, you know, this is really cool what Mr. Terry's doing. I could do something like that. I got a lot of stupid, ridiculous, you know, history knowledge that I could pass on. And, um, so I started doing the reaction videos, and they just went nuts. It started with a couple of Sabaton reactions, and then I went from there. So Mr. Terry's the inspiration for that. Um, MASH, that, that's really interesting, Mr. Terry. MASH was more than twice as long as a series than the Korean War was. Um, and so the, the reaction videos have become an outlet for me while I can't travel as much. But my passion is still the historic site videos. So you're going to get a mix of both on this channel. And that GoFundMe was set up by Insane uh, and the mods who wanted to do something to help me to be able to pay for me to make those trips. So, oh yeah, I think um, Mr. Terry and I can probably come up with a collab sometime. That would be a lot of fun. I would really enjoy that. Stream raids, yes. Battlefront here, I appreciate that. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see get demoted again. Now, or you die enough or you live long enough to get canceled for some reason. So Yes, I am a professional genealogist as well. What site am I planning to go to next? I'm gonna do something local. I got two things. Abrams, I am gonna do more Valiant Hearts. Um I'm gonna to go to Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland, which is an hour away from me. Um because what's that? You're what? Oh, hi. The wife is in, is invading the stream. What am I hearing? What? Where? When? Lakeview Cemetery. When? 
I don't know. Sometime. Uh, it's up. It's in Cleveland. That you're going this week. Oh, I, I said soon. I don't know when. Why? Like Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Lakeview Cemetery is in Cleveland, and um, Elliot Ness is buried there. President Garfield's buried there. Ray Chapman, who was a Major League Baseball player killed in a game, is buried there. Um, there's a bunch of other famous people too. Insane. Thank you. He's inserting dominance. Yeah. Uh, insane. He just donated 50 euros. We're we'll gonna need 20 of it. <laughs> The kid that's coming. Oh, <laughs> she came up to get money. Mr. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Insane. <laughs> I need that. Say hi to Mr. Terry. He's here in the chat, oh, too. Oh, hey, we watch you. Hi, Mr. Terry. <laughs> um, $20. Yeah. yeah, please. Thanks. Here you go. Oh, yeah, that's all I need. Uh, all right. That's all she wants me for is the money. Um, hi, Mrs. History, they said. Hi. Um, so, oh, Mr. Terry, that, that stinks. Uh, hopefully, you can get the tech issues sorted out. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's one. Uh, also, I live about a half hour from where the northernmost uh, battle of the Civil War was fought outside of Salineville, Ohio. Um, and I've actually got a map where I've kind of figured out exactly where all the troop movements happen. I'm going to take my drone down there and make a video about the last, ra last day of Morgan's Raid. Take you to the events where the Battle of Selenville happened. Show you where the the men were stationed, what was happening, and then show you the surrender site. So that's what I'm going to do fairly soon as well. I will not comment on that. Um, right, everybody's saying hi, Mrs. BTH. Oh, hello. Um, all right. Geography and space, every country, there's great extent. You know, uh, speaking of Mr. Terry, since he's in here, he did a really cool video, and I thought it was a great idea, but I didn't want to copy what he was doing all the time. So, um, But he did a thing where he was using Google Earth to kind of talk through World War One, and I thought that was really cool, and you guys should check that out. Uh, he did, And Mr. Terry's doing something similar with March Madness, but his is um, historic, char like people in history rather than movies and stuff. So... Um, Codex, I appreciate that, uh, all your donations. Um, all right, so let me do my last vote here, and then we'll see what the results are, and we'll move on to the next phase of this. We Were Soldiers is great. I really love that one. It's pretty close to history. Black Hawk Down, so good. Death of Stalin's really good. Um, Full Metal Jacket, I wasn't really as high on as a lot of other people are. Um, same same with Apocalypse Now. Polo 13's pretty good. 13 Days I really liked. Um, MASH TV series boy I still have nightmares about that one episode um, the one where uh, he's talking to the uh, counselor and he talks about a woman killing a chicken to silence it only it wasn't really a chicken it was a baby Oh, that one's just brutal the crown's really good I like the crown a lot Chernobyl was fantastic I love Jared Harris anything he's in he's in the crown also uh, and he was in Lincoln. He played uh, General Grant in Lincoln. Zero Dark Thirty I liked a lot. Good Morning Vietnam's good. Uh, the Last Emperor. Oh, no, let's see. Um, Munich was, that's a tough movie, but that's one that needs to be seen. Let me just kind of make sure I get my top eight right at least. I think I would put Chernobyl up a little higher for me. Platoon's good, yeah. All right, I think I got my top eight right at least. What's my favorite game? Um, oh, it's making me resubmit. Oh, that's, that's crazy talk. All right, let's just go and uh, see the results here. My favorite game right now is Grand Tactician Civil War, I would say. The Terror. Oh, yeah, we should have added The Terror. That's really good. Isn't Jared Harris in that too? So is um, Kieran Hines, and he's fantastic. All right. You guys really ranked 300 as your number one ancient to 1815 movie. You guys are killing me with this. All right. I got to write these down somewhere so I can get the, uh, the rankings right. Actually, 300 and Gladiator tied. A War of Rights stream. We could stream some War of Rights sometime.
Kenny. Oh, we t- we play a ton of Hearts of Iron Four. We got a seventeen person, um, seventeen person multiplayer, great with the Great War mod going on Hearts of Iron Four right now over on the gaming channel. Uh, Lewis Davies Risk is a huge favorite in my family. Um, did it reset the answers because of the change? I don't know. Um, but I think we've got enough to go on, and you guys will be able to vote on this next part. So, um, let's see. Why my daughter doesn't give a sh- me a shout out? Because my daughter's audience is nine to twelve year old girls, and they would not care about this channel at all. So, um, oh, I'm a huge fan of all things paradox. Yeah, three hundred's more accurate on the history than. Um, then I think I really initially realized. Yeah, David Ray, I agree. That was really tough. Um, everyone's answers got reset. Well, that's okay. We're going to, we're, we'll still have a good top eight, uh, to be able to vote on. I can't believe master and commanders down this far. Yeah, I will post. I'll, I'll do the results when we get to the thing. Get to the end of it. Looks like we just had a few more responses. So, the HOI4 Ginger Monkey Gang. Oh, man. I have not watched any Slovenian war movies, no. All right, so let's see. So ancient to 1815, we're going to do, we'll do gladiator as the number one versus, am I doing this the right way? Three hundred is basically anime, so the internet loves it. Yeah, that's about right. Do I play World of Warships? I have here and there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've actually got a couple of 18, or a couple of ones that tied here. So we'll do Gladiator versus, let's say, Master and Commander. I'm going to make a couple of executive decisions with the ones that tied. We'll do 300 against John Adams. How do we do this? Trying to figure out how do I add additional ones. It might be easier for me to just do this in Survey, Survey Monkey. All right, let's create this. Oh, downfall is fantastic. All right, so here we go. Question one, uh, you're going to be doing, we'll do check boxes. And one is going to be gladiator versus, oh, now we got to pull it back up. Sorry, guys, this is normally stuff I would edit out when I make these videos, but we're doing this real uh, in real time. So yeah, we do war thunder streams, uh, quite a bit actually. Herodotus was full of crap. Uh, look at his descriptions of the walls of Babylon. If you want to know how full of crap he was, and he most definitely did not know how to count.
All right, so we said Gladiator versus Master and Commander. Next question. This is number two. And this is going to be 300 versus John Adams. Yeah, we could do another history cahoot sometime. The only problem is you, it's limited to like 50 people that can play. Uh, Jim, Band of Brothers will be in the World War II category. Uh, we'll do Waterloo versus, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I took a couple of these out that were close. Waterloo versus King Arthur. Oh, wait. We just got to say three here. You guys will get a chance to vote on all these, and that will help narrow things down really quickly. Um, King Arthur is historically out. Well, I mean, it's kind of largely based on a historical idea. Certainly not the fictional version that we all know about. I don't think it's going to last very long in the voting anyway. What did we say the last one was? Amadeus versus Troy. King Arthur and Waterloo. Kingdom of Heaven and turn Washington spies. I forgot to put numbers in these. So Rather than rank these, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do five of five categories. It's gonna get a little weird, but it, we'll figure it out. All right, I'm gonna let you guys vote on that while I start working on the second one. So I'll give you guys the link to this. Herodotus, divide all his numbers by 10. That's about right. There were absolutely not millions of Persians fighting 300 Spartans. Battlefront Hero, you can get 200 people in a Kahoot if you're a school because you can get a good deal on it. Um, I would have to pay like $1,000 to be able to do that. So you guys start voting on that while I start working on the next one. Yes, people do ru ruin Kahoot with bots. I had a hard time. Um, I had to do like a extra layer of protection on it a few times and then that makes it really hard for people to get into it it kind of stinks that that's the case so you guys vote on round one while i start making the uh 1816 to 1918 version of this So 1917 is going to be number one. How do we rank these properly here? I don't know why it's not putting them in order. Yeah, there were there were a lot of other people. Get HGG school cahoot. Uh, 
Hey, take care, Mr. Terry. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure you guys go check out his channel when you get a chance. So 1917. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, 1917 versus the Red Baron is going to be the, the first one. Second one's going to be Gettysburg versus The Last Samurai. I'm going to organize back these back the way they were. A little easier to see. Gettysburg. Um, Glory versus Alamo. And then Zulu and All Quiet on the Western Front will go with. Yeah, there's a slow mode on the chat, guys, just because it was too insane, for lack of a better word. Okay, this one's done. I'm going to post the link for this one for you guys. The sp spam becomes real Herodotus. <laughs> All right, so there's the vote for the uh, 1816 to 1918 poll. Heather, greetings in New Hampshire. How's the weather up there today? Beautiful state, by the way. All right, on to the third one, and then we'll look at all these results when we're done. I gotta edit the title of this one. I don't know why it says copy of madness round one. Um, there we go. I always have a plan, kind of like uh, Bismarck, huh? Okay, uh, let's do number three. While folks are voting on these ones, we should have a good good number of responses on these. Madness, World War II for this one. So we're, obviously we're going to have Band of Brothers as the number one, two, three... Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So um, that'll be an easy vote, I think, in this first one. Band of Brothers and Fury. Second one's going to be Saving Private Ryan against come and see third one's going to be dunkirk versus we'll say downfall i'll be curious to see how you guys vote on these 
And then Enemy at the Gates versus the Pacific. And I'm going to post that link here in just a minute for this one. Yes, Liam, it is bad that you haven't seen Band of Brothers. Get an HBO app right now, sign up, and watch it. And I've heard that I've heard that Generation War is like the German version of that, and that it's worth checking out. So I need to do that. There's a World War II link. All right, we've got one more to do here: the post World War II, and then we'll do all of these. Oh, yeah, if you're a Texan, the Alamo's number one. I get that. All right, so you can see we've got 80 people voted on the first one, 65 on the second, 79 on the third. I got to correct this title again. I don't know why it does that. Oh, there's no HBO in the Netherlands? Really? You can't get it on, on the app? All right, we got one more to do, and then we're going to see the results. We're going to start narrowing this whole thing down, and we're going to pick some winners here in the next 20 minutes or so. Generation War is worth watching. I definitely need to check that out. I would love to watch something like that from the German side of things and get that perspective. All right, so now we're going to do post-World War II. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so we were soldiers. It's going to go up against Gandhi. Um, death of Stalin against let's see actually that one probably shouldn't have been Gandhi that should have been siege of Jadotville so I'm gonna fix that which I have not seen by the way full metal jacket is going to go against Apocalypse Now. Battle of the Vietnam War movies. Death of Stalin. An American Sniper. That's a tough one, but I think I'd probably have to go with Death of Stalin there. And then, what do we have left? Or is that all of them? No, what did I miss? We Were Soldiers, Siege of Jadotville, Full Metal Jacket, Apocalypse Now. Oh, Black Hawk Down. And Apollo 13. So now what we'll do is I'll, I'll give you guys the link to vote on this one, and I'm going to go start looking at the results on the first one. William, was it not like, could people not watch that, uh, that movie in Russia? Okay, here's your last link. Uh, Gandhi didn't make the top eight. 
Hunt for Red October is not based on anything historical. So that's why it's not in there. Yeah, Fury's actually on the on the list. I, I will probably get to Bill Wirtz's History of Japan at some point, yeah. This is the one I just did. I gotta edit the title again. I don't know why it does this. Post World War II. All right. So now we're gonna look at our winners. And we're gonna narrow this down. And we're gonna do it again. So let me grab something to write with here. Or I'll grab my laptop and I'll just start typing in the list. So we need, um, let's see where we're at. That's the ranking. That's, I don't know which one's which here. So just give me a minute while I, I type these up for myself. Pearl Harbor was on the list, but it's, uh, you need a new link for which one? It looks like they're all working because people are voting on all these. The link in the description is not going to work anymore because we're past that point now. That's why. The last link is broken. All right, hold on a second. Let's see here. Try that link for the post-World War II. All right, so 1917 wins. Not a surprise there. I gotta pull up a document so I can make this list. Once we get done with this, then I'll catch up on your questions and things like that. Gettysburg wins. Glory. Actually, all quiet on the Western Front. We accidentally did five in this category. So I'm actually going to put three in one of them and two on the other. Oh, no, I guess we only did four. Okay. So there we have that one. Those are the final four, and we'll do another poll here in a second with all of these on them. Still broken? All right, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Well, it looks like one person responded to it. All right, give me a minute, and I will fix that once we get through these other ones. Thank you for that dollar donation. Appreciate that. I think this is the wrong one. Yeah. All right, give me one second, guys. Let me see which, what each of these are. I'm going to delete some of the extra ones because I'm getting a little messed up on which one's which because it doesn't do the titles right. So here's the World War II one. Band of Brothers wins. And then what I'll do is I'll delete all of these that we're not using. And I'll give you a chance to vote on those again in a second, the ones that aren't working. Dunkirk wins a narrow victory over downfall. And then the Pacific. All right, so let me delete this particular one. That way we can delete the ones that we aren't using. How do I do that? 
All right, copy madness 918, 1916 to let's delete this one that we just did. This was the ranking one. We can delete that. Madness Round 1, World War II. This is the ancient one here. I don't know why it says World War II, but that one's working. So we'll, we'll do that one, and then we'll fix the one that didn't work. Gladiator wins over Master and Commander. 300 wins big time. I'm disappointed in both of those results, but I get it. Waterloo and Troy. Look at that. All right. So we'll delete this one. I'll get you guys a proper link to vote on the last one. So what's this one then? Okay, so that's... We already did that. So it's this post-World War II one that isn't working. Somebody must have just posted a, a link that is working. Yeah, I, Matthias, I, I understand that what you're saying about that, about Enemy at the Gates. All right, let's see if this link works, guys. I agree. Atlantic Lion, I like John Adams way better than 300, but the internet rules the day. Lewis, actually, yeah, I did a reaction to a Simple History video, I think. Or no, it wasn't Simple History. So I'll give you guys a second to vote on that, and then we're going to do the next part. We'll be down to our final 16. Okay, cool. It's working now. Excellent. Let me go ahead and start creating the next poll. Because now we're down to the round of 16 voting. Skynet. <laughs> Got to make sure you hydrate. That's right. Yeah, Christoph, I know that the, the ranking part kind of got screwed up. And unfortunately, that's the nature of doing this as a live stream like this but it's just something fun we're gonna what we're gonna do is when we get down to the uh the final four the winner in each category we're gonna talk about the merits of each maybe we'll do it at eight we'll we'll, we'll spend a little time talking about each of these movies and why they deserve to or series and why they deserve to be the winner Okay, so this is going to be 1917 versus All Quiet on the Western Front. Actually, you know what? Let's do it this way. Let's just do a top four in each one of these, and you guys can vote on which one you think should win out of those four. So this is 1816 to 1918. Glory and Gettysburg. Next question is going to be World War II, and we got to see how your results are on the other one.
All right, there's uh, question two. Ancient through nine or through eighteen fifteen. And then here's our last one, which we got to go look at the results now since you guys have been voting. Let's look at our post-World War II results. We were soldiers. So I'm just going to throw these in here. Full Metal Jacket wins. Death of Stalin wins. Which again, if you haven't seen and you like dark humor, I recommend. And Apollo 13 knocks off Black Hawk down, just barely. All right. So now you guys can vote in each of these four categories and you can choose which one you think should win in each of these four. And I'm gonna do my own and we're gonna talk through these movies and why we think they should win and you guys can join in that. But here's the vote. There's the link. The boot camp scene in Full Metal Jacket was accurate to your experience. That's interesting. I think that's the part of the movie most people remember more than anything, rather than the parts where they're actually in Vietnam. Now, Arlie Ermey is so underrated. Well, I shouldn't say he's underrated. Everybody knows how great he is. So I'm going to go ahead and vote in this one myself. And we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit through these. Uh, before we get to them. So 1917, probably one of the newest ones on this list. It might be the newest one on this list. Um, there, you know, there's really a lack of good World War I movies out there. Don't you guys agree? Uh, I just feel like that for such a huge historic event, compared to World War II, for example, there's just such a lack of good movies about that time period. And 1917, I think, fills that nicely, but we need more. Um, All Quiet on the Western Front is obviously an older film, but that was, up until 1917, really kind of the definitive World War I movie. Uh, we really didn't get a lot of other good ones beyond that. Uh, Glory, to me, probably remains the best Civil War, U U.S. Civil War movie ever made. Uh, it's so good. Uh, and it strikes a nice balance between the history and also getting to know the characters. Um, I really like Glory a lot. Um, and Gettysburg uh, was really well done. I, not real crazy about a few of the acting, the casting choices in that one. But by and large, they stick to the history pretty well. Um, Gettysburg is based on a book, a, a historical fiction book uh, called um, The Killer Angels. Uh, and so it has point of view characters. And so it doesn't really cover some of the key events of Gettysburg. Like they don't show the first Minnesota, which was a really great story that I wish somebody would do well in a movie. But it wasn't covered because it wasn't really from, well, I, I guess they could have put it because Hancock is a point of view character and the first Minnesota is part of Hancock's story, Gettysburg. So yeah, Sergeant York, uh, Chris, you're right. It was kind of World War II propaganda, although Alvin York was there uh, to help them with that movie. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But um, boy, I'm going to vote for glory on this one. All right, World War II. Hey, Panama. Very cool. Glad to have somebody from Panama. Um, I saw somebody from the Czech Republic saying hi as well. All right, so Band of Brothers, to me, it should win this entire thing. Uh, for me personally, 
there's never been anything that I have connected with and that I have wanted to watch over and over and over again, like Band of Brothers. You know, for, for one thing, it's a 10-part series, so they can do so much more justice to the story than in a two-hour movie. So I guess in that sense, it's a little unfair to compare it to movies. Uh, but it was so well done, and it's a real story, uh, which is one of the reasons I don't like Saving Private Ryan as much, even though the the Omaha beat scene is just phenomenal and so well done and really puts you in that event. The rest of it's basically largely, I mean, it's loosely based on a real story about the Nyland brothers, but uh, I just couldn't get into it for that reason. Das Boat was on the list, Will. Just didn't make the, the point at which we're at right now. Uh, Dunkirk is very good, and so is the Pacific, but for me, uh, they just don't measure up. And by the way, the Pacific and Band of Brothers were basically made by the same. Um, they were both made, made for HBO, Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg. They're making a third one. It's not going to be on HBO. I think it's going to be on maybe Showtime. I can't remember. Maybe Apple TV. I think it's Apple TV. Um, but they're making it, and it's about the 8th Air Force. So it's going to show the air war. So that's going to be really cool. Patrick, uh, hello in the state up north that I will not mention. Delaware, very cool. Um, I don't think he's in here right now, but uh, if Phil McCracken's around, he would be very happy to see that you're from Delaware. I'm going to vote for Band of Brothers on that one. Um, all right, Ancient to, 19, to 1815. My choice for this category didn't make the top four. I think Master and Commander was uh, probably my choice. Master and Commander is so, so good. Um, even though it's a fictional story, it's very realistic in terms of the history. Um, of the ones that are on the list... Um, Gladiator, so good, really good. Uh, it's a pretty loosely based movie on historical events and on historical characters, uh, but really well done. And, uh, you know, Russell Crowe's fantastic in that. Uh, it's so good. Um, but I don't think it's, for me, the favorite. 300, again, uh, gets more of the history right than you might think. Um, but still, for me, uh, just not, not good enough to win this list. Uh, and I and saying you're probably right. Generation War has probably not been seen by enough people to make it this far uh, on the list. Uh, Waterloo, come on! What can you say about this? Is a movie from 1970. Isn't that the one that used Soviet troops uh, as extras? Um, but Waterloo was like uh, you know, in an age before they started using CGI for all this stuff. Just some of the scenes with the thousands and thousands of extras on the screen. Like the overhead shot from the air that you see of all of the squares as the French cavalry ride in. Oh, it's so, so good. Uh, there's a lot so good in that one. Tristan, I haven't done a video on the last part of Gods and Generals. I'm not sure I'm going to. Because everybody's been telling me that it mostly focuses on the filmmaking part of things rather than anything else about the history. So filmmaking is not really an area of expertise for me. And I feel like there's not a lot I could add to that part of the topic. So ATB, you work the landscaping uh, in Ephrata at the cemetery. Uh, the Ber Berchtestraga, or I don't even remember the name of it. I've been to his grave there. Uh, it's actually on my Instagram page. I posted a picture of me there to pay my respects to that. Yeah, 16,000 Soviet soldiers. Very cool. Uh, and Troy, uh, you know, I wasn't really crazy about the movie Troy. Big name actors, a lot of great actors in there. Eric Bana, um, what's his name? Uh, Brad Pitt is in that. Uh, Orlando Bloom. Who's the girl that plays Helen? Uh, the one from, uh, I think she's a German actress. Or maybe, yeah, I think she's German. Uh, she was really good in that. But I'm going to go Waterloo on that one. A movie based around the Battle of New Orleans and Andrew Jackson. That'd be pretty cool. Um, all right, so post-World War II. We Were Soldiers is fantastic. Sam Elliott is one of my all-time favorite actors. Uh, and he does such a great job with the, his character in that one. Mel Gibson uh, as Hal Moore. Uh, we Were Soldiers does a really good job of sticking to the history. 
Um, I think that's the Idrang Valley. It's basically the first kind of real battle of Vietnam for the U.S. soldiers. 7th Cavalry, I think that is. Um, Diane Kruger, thank you for everybody who mentioned that. Alexander in Germany, uh, guten Abend, how are you doing? I guess it's nighttime there now, huh? Many horses were killed during the making of Waterloo, really? Wow. Oh yeah, Di I, Will, I would not disagree with you on that. Diane Kruger is a very attractive woman. For me personally, I don't talk about this kind of thing a lot, um, but uh, for me, the most attractive actresses to me, uh, one is Rebecca Ferguson, the Swedish actress. Oh, yeah. I could watch her in anything all day long. And Natalie Dormer, who played Anne Boleyn in uh, The Tudors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I'm getting distracted now. So, all right. Full Metal Jacket. Iconic movie. Wouldn't be surprised if that one wins this. But for me, not the, the winner in this section. Uh, it is Abend. Okay. Um, Death of Stalin, you got to watch. If you like history and you like dark humor, Death of Stalin, fantastic. One of my all-time favorite acting performances. I say it all the time. Jason Isaacs, who's in a lot of great historic movies, by the way. He was in Black Hawk Down. He's in The Patriot. Um, trying to think of what else he's in, but he's in a lot of really good stuff. Um, but Death of Stalin is so, so good and actually gets a lot of the history right, even if it does so in kind of a dark, humorous way. Uh, is the wife around, David? Yeah, she's she's somewhere, but she knows. She knows I, I find both of those women very attractive. I also have man crushes, you know. I'm not attracted to men, and that's not a judgment on any of you men who might be. Fine, not a problem. I'm not attracted to men. I would never date one or anything like that, but... Um, Gerard Butler, yeah. Uh, I got a man crush on him. He's, he's pretty cool. Um, I got a few others too. I can't think of an, oh, Matthew McConaughey. Um, pretty cool, pretty, pretty, you know, guys that make me like, yeah, I could, I wish I could be like that, I guess, is more of a thing. Um, oh, Buscemi killed it in Death of Stalin, I agree. Very good. All right, where are we at here? Um, and then Apollo 13. Very good. Good movie, but I don't know, like, it doesn't blow me away, make me want to go watch it over and over again. This one's going to come down to We Were Soldiers and Death of Stalin for me. And I'm going to go with Death of Stalin. Who did he play in The Patriot? He was the main antagonist, the British, um, uh, the guy that's based on a real-life character. Tavington is the name of his character in, um, in, the, in The Patriot. I have not seen Jojo Rabbit yet. I want to. Um, all right, so there's my vote. Harrison Ford's great. Oh, Denzel Washington. Um, yeah, there are certain actors that no matter what they're in, I will watch it because it's them. Uh, Denzel Washington's one of those people for me. Harrison Ford is. Um, Glory is pretty accurate. Uh, it gets a few things creative license mostly but by and large glory gets the the in the the story right uh about what keanu reeves is a fantastic person i think he's a just a real quality human being he's a good dude phil wilson game of game of thrones yeah i have seen it and natalie dormer's in that too absolutely my daughter finds leonardo dicaprio very attractive so um yeah, he, he's based on Tavington. The character Tavington is loosely based on Tarleton, Bannister Tarleton, who is a real person. You proudly sold 40 grams of weed and amphetamine in Drug Dealer Simulator earlier to raise funds for the GoFundMe. <laughs> Thank you, Insane, I guess. I haven't seen Danger Close. All right, let's look at our results. Yeah, Bannister Tarleton is the guy he's based on. Tarleton was his last name. Um, all right, we got to look at our our, our, our uh, top four here. Where is the top four? Did I, oh, I said round of 16. That's why, yeah. All right, let's look at the results. The guy who plays Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, he's pretty cool. Okay, so in the 1816 to 1918 category, we've got 1917 and Gettysburg is the top two. All right, I, I won't argue with those results. Uh, but 1917 got almost half the vote in that one. 
Sean Bean. Yes, I love Sean Bean. World War II, Band of Brothers destroys everything. Totally agree with that. Can't argue with that at all. So I know what we're going to do is we're going to pit these four against each other. Ulysses S. Grant, yeah, he put on a little weight there toward the end, but everybody says as far as U.S. presidents go that Franklin Pierce is the hottest president. So I don't know. I, I'm not a fair judge of that. All right, number three, ancient to 1815, Waterloo narrowly beats out Gladiator. Wow, that was a one percentage difference. It was one vote. So if you don't think your vote matters, folks, it does. If I had voted for Gladiator or something else, then Gladiator would have won over Waterloo. You hate the fact that Sean Bean doesn't rhyme. It's not Seen Bean or Sean Bond. I get it. I get it. Have I seen the Forrest Brothers? I have not. All right, and post-World War II, here we go. Death of Stalin wins. All right. Excellent, guys. Apollo 13, a surprising second there. Okay, so here we go. So we've got 1917, Band of Brothers, Gladiator, and Death of Stalin. And I'm going to make this as a ranked choice one. So you guys can rank these in the order that you want them to be. So we can get a top four all together here. Is the next Bismarck coming out today? Yes, it is. Um, I will probably take a short break as soon as we're done with this stream, and then I'm going to shoot that video. So, And then I've got to work on some stuff for my gaming channel. Uh, the link on the, in the description, by the way, if you want to check out the gaming channel, because I've got some stuff coming up this week for the gaming channel that I've been working on, so i got to focus on that this evening. Uh, so this is going to be the winner. We're choosing the winner now. We're going to rank these top four. All right, so this is going to be a ranking style. And what was the fourth one? Why am I losing in my... You guys are going to have to tell me. I can't remember. Um, it would be in the ancient category, right? Oh, Waterloo. Yeah. How good am I at Hearts of Iron 4? I think I'm pretty good. I got like 2,000 hours into it. So I guess you have to get decent at it. Will Simmons, new Grand Tactician coming tomorrow. All right. So you're going to rank these, guys. Um, that's how this is going to work. You can drag them into the order that you want them to submit. And then we're going to see what wins overall we can actually even see who gave what vote to each one so um and i'll give you guys some time to vote before i do my own ranking here we go there's your link uh mason just voting on which one you like the best Mads, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the Hearts of Iron videos. Thank you, Insane, for that endorsement. Insane and I have been on the same team in both our multiplayer games. So, uh, Malk, you just go to the Discord. Click on the link in the description. And uh, you can go to the Discord and we can and just send something, type something in the Hearts of Iron 4 chat and we can add you to the multiplayer room, uh, chat room that we have on there. All right, so let me uh, open this up for myself, and I'll give you guys a few minutes to vote before I do my own rankings. Didn't have to change anything with that one? Nice. 6,000 War Thunder hours? Dude, obviously I know what you play all the time. Uh, my game that I have the most hours into is probably Ultimate General Civil War. I think I was over 3,000 on that. Have I seen any armchair historian videos? Here and there, yes. But it's been a while. 
I am going to start doing some reactions to some other channels. I'm not just going to do extra history all the time. The problem is the extra history videos do really, really well. Second only to oversimplified on the channel, but I only have so many more oversimplifieds to do. So I'm trying to space those out a little bit. But the extra history ones, there's a ton of content there, and they, they do really well on my channel as far as the views that they get. So I'm giving you guys a few minutes to vote before I do my own vote. Am I a Civilization player? Yeah, but it's been a while. But boy, I've played all the way back to the original Civilization. Any choice after Master and Commander is choosing between the lesser of two weevils? Good joke. I approve. I approve of that. Excellent, excellent use of that quote from the movie. You have 3,000 hours in Europa Universalis 4. Oh, nice, Razor Dude. There's some good movies about Finland in World War II. Matthias, I need to check some of those out. My favorite video game ever. Oh, wow. It's going to end up being Grand Tactician Civil War, at least for now, if they can get the AI going better. But I don't know. Oh, yeah, I got to react to some tick. You're right. I, yeah, I, uh, Jamie, I typically read every single comment. I don't always react or respond to every comment, but I read every comment on every video. Most underrated actor vote. Interesting. Um, mm, I don't know who I'd say for that. Felipe, thank you for that. In, uh, did I say that right or is, there, is it just Felipe? Um, in Uruguay. Very cool. Christian Bale's a great actor. Uh, but every time I see him, I still just see his character from American Psycho because that was the first movie I ever saw him in. Gory Gaming, what is up? Caleb is asking for dinner. Okay, Gory. That's my daughter, Rachel. Gory Gaming 24601. I'm almost done, Rachel. I got like five minutes left in this stream. All right, let's talk about my choices here for the ranking these top four. Obviously, you guys already know by now that Band of Brothers is my number one. Um, beyond that, whew, I'm going to put 1917 fourth. I like 1917, but I think it probably gets more love than it would if there were other competition, better competitions uh, among World War One. There's just not a lot to choose from with World War One movies, unfortunately. And to me, a completely historical movie or series takes precedence over one that is set in a historical time period but is a fictional story uh so like titanic for example 1917 is a fictional story taking place in a real event saving private ryan same thing uh so i'm ranking it fourth for that reason band of brothers is going to be first for me cinematography in 1917 was fantastic can't get around that it was really really well done in that department um hogging the internet the kids are getting pissed Oh, yeah, my daughter wants to stream. So, yeah, fair enough. Uh, all right, Death of Stalin and Waterloo. Waterloo is so good and such an epic film. Death of Stalin was great. I love it. Death of Stalin would probably be my second favorite movie on this choice or on this list, but I'm going to put Waterloo second just because it's pretty epic, about a pretty epic event. Uh, so this is going to be my four. Yeah, the one-take shot thing is really cool with 1917. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at how the results came out on this one. All right, so you guys ranked it definitely very different than I did. Band of Brothers, then 1917, then Death of Stalin, then Waterloo. Let's see if there was any like anything that stands out here. So 50 of the 91 ranked Band of Brothers as number one. That's a majority of the first place votes. Um, Waterloo got the least amount of the first place votes. Um, but tied with Death of Stalin there. Uh, 1917 overwhelming choice for second favorite. Death of Stalin was close there. Uh, so it all came out pretty, pretty even altogether. So... Yeah, Christopher Plummer, fantastic actor, one of my favorites. 
Waterloo by ABBA. There's an ABBA song called Waterloo, Rachel. That's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, I'm not a fan of that mound, but I will be visiting the Waterloo Battlefield. And we had a big donation to the GoFundMe today that's going to help uh, to send me to Europe to make videos. Um, my family were hoping to do a UK trip. I know my daughter's excited about that. Uh, and then after that will be a Western Europe trip. Um, so that's coming. But if you are able to and you want to donate to the GoFundMe, the link's in the description. Um, but I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you guys so much. I have not seen the musical called The Civil War, but my daughter's concert yesterday, some boys did a song from that. Um, so that was cool. That was their big break song. I didn't know that. So I'm going to wrap this up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to everybody for being a part of this stream. Uh, I'm going to let my daughter do her stream, and then I will record my uh, Otto von Bismarck video. So it'll be up later on today, and i probably be too late for our friends in Europe um, unless you stay up late. Um, but uh, we're definitely going to do that. Uh, we'll do another thing like this. I'll try to organize it a little better for the next one. I'm going to try to do more streams on this channel throughout the week if I can. Um, my, my at Waterloo, Napoleon did surrender. That's right. So thank you guys so much. Make sure you subscribe. Check out the links in the description below. And we'll be back again soon.